This is Park Jong-hee, the third president of South Korea. I will divulge his leadership and extract some of the most important traits that constitute an effective leader. Tackling this question is fundamental for this documentary. An effective leader uses their charisma and potent vision to improve living conditions while leaving a long-lasting impact in the country after their tenure ends. Therefore, we must analyze the accomplishments that shaped Park's legacy, and more importantly, how it still affects South Korea today. Park Chung-hee was born on November 14, 1917, and grew up in an impoverished family. He was raised in Korea, which was under Imperial Japanese rule. After attending the Japanese Military Academy, Park served in the Japanese Army during the Second World War. After Japan's defeat in the war, Korea became independent. Park became a Brigadier General during the Korean War and was promoted to General in 1958. South Korea emerged as a result of the war and much of the nation was decimated. Park was frustrated with the current state of affairs. The alarming inaction of reviving the economy and living standards compelled Park to conspire with fellow military comrades and successfully execute a coup. As a result, Park seized power in 1961, and with pressure to establish democratic institutions, he held an election in which he won in 1963. The results of the Korean War made the nation one of the most impoverished in its time. In 1961, per capita income in South Korea was less than $100 a year, which was nearly 30 cents a day. North Korea was better off than the South, as it was home to an abundance of resource minerals and a strong industrial base. Park had an overwhelming responsibility of revitalizing the economy. Within weeks of his coup, he had established a body to provide central government direction to economic development. He implemented a five-year plan, also called the 경제 사회 발전 5개년 계획, and Park put knowledgeable economists in charge of administering it. This five-year plan was in five-year increments starting from 1962 to 1996. Park established key pillars to support this potent vision of economic revival. The Economic Planning Board, which was the mitochondria of Park's economic revival mission, oversaw economic planning and industrialization. The Economic Planning Board gave birth to modern departments that control the nation's treasury and other financial institutions, such as the Ministry of Finance, the Ministry of Trade and Industry, and the Ministry of Labor, and the Bank of Korea. Also, the Korean Central Intelligence Agency, also known as the Chungang Jongbobu, silenced and suppressed any political opponents or dissenters uh, to ensure the smooth execution of Park's agenda. To promote speedy economic development, Park took the vital but highly unpopular decision of normalizing diplomatic relations with their former colonizer, Japan. Normalization with Japan in the 1965 brought $800 million in financial aid. In the same year, Park agreed to help U.S. forces in Vietnam and Washington extravagantly rewarded them. In the mid-60s, revenues from the Vietnam War were the largest single source of foreign exchange earnings for South Korea. These funds helped launch the Korea's transformation over the next two decades from an economically deprived nation to a world leader in iron and steel production, shipbuilding, chemicals, consumer electronics, and other cherished commodities. Moreover, to ensure efficient and speedy transportation between Seoul and Busan, the southernmost city of South Korea, Park built the extravagant Seoul-Busan Highway. This novel infrastructure contributed to Korea's modernization and rapid industrialization. During Park's tenure, Korea's capital income increased 10 times, and under his rule, Korea went from an underdeveloped nation to an industrial powerhouse. 
This extraordinary and unprecedented economic success is called the miracle of Han River, also known as Hangang Gijok. And South Korea would not be where it is today on the global stage without Park's endeavors. After the hostilities of the Korean War, the nation suffered severe destruction. Villages were in ruins, and living conditions were in abject poverty. The Se Maol movement, literally translated to the New Village Movement, was launched by Park in 1970 and inspired communities to become self-reliant in living conditions based on diligence, self-help, and cooperation. Together, with the moral support from the government, villagers undertook agricultural reforms and transformed the rural landscape. Lee Kyung won the Director General of the Korea Semao Undong Center, said that this movement was, quote, not only about improving the materialistic conditions like infrastructure or individual wealth, but was also about the locals' dedication to making their communities more prosperous by overcoming poverty and creating a better future. Korea saw significant improvements in health, education, industry, and transportation as a result. Its success inspired other nations to adopt this model for regional development. A significant aspect of this movement was that it empowered locals to stand on their own feet instead of heavily relying on government and foreign aid. Starting from small villages and rural areas, the movement became a national movement, and later a global movement. In the span of merely a decade, Korea's per capita income augmented more than five times, reaching 1,500 US dollars. In retrospect, Park jong hees patriotic vision and ambitious actions cement him as a national hero. Critics label him as an anti-democratic leader who significantly halted democratization in South Korea. However, one can never overlook the great deeds Park has done for his country. The United States government expressed deep concern for South Korea and reprimanded much of Park's authoritarian leadership. In fact, Douglas MacArthur, the U.S. general and head of the United Nations Command, described South Korea as a hopeless nation with no future. Park wanted to prove everyone wrong. As it turned out, he was just the man Korea needed. Political opponents of Park have also described him as a man who transformed South Korea from an underdeveloped nation to an industrial powerhouse. Park jong hee was a transformative and visionary leader who used his charisma and potent vision to improve living conditions while leaving a long-lasting impact on the country after his reign. He transformed his vision for South Korea into reality. His influence has expanded well into the 21st century when his daughter, Park geun became the nation's first female president. A majority of her votes came from the elderly who adored the former dictator. Today, Park is recognized and respected as his country's most effective leader. Through Park's accomplishments, South Korea is the 12th largest economy in the world and exerts tremendous influence in the global market. Its developmental history is a living testament to what effective leadership can bring about, and Park is at the center of this national achievement.